You're watching The Weekly here on RT International with me, Nadira Tudor. Our highlights from the week and today's top stories. Welcome to the programme. Up to 250,000 people could be displaced by fighting for control of the west of the Iraqi city of Mosul. That's from the UN's refugee agency. The UN facilities that already all across the headlines. There's one article here that tells how a family had to bury their two-month-old baby girl who was killed in an explosion under mud and rocks. Oxfam says 750,000 civilians are still trapped in the western part. Washington has now admitted its forces are involved in fighting, despite previously stating its mission was to strictly advise and assist. Artis Gana Chichikan picks up the story. The U.S. military is now confirming what many have believed all along. The American forces deployed to most... We heard from several experts on what is behind the American military's advise and assist programs. The terms advise... ...provide the public. Two people were seen picking a fight with a Trump supporter at a rally in Los Angeles where the Oscars ceremony is set to take place later today. Here's video from the scene. <laughs> The U.S. is still witnessing outbreaks of unrest as President Trump continues to divide the public. Two people were seen picking a fight with a Trump supporter at a rally in Los Angeles where the Oscars ceremony is set to take place later today. This video was taken at the scene. Earlier this week, more anti-Trump protests took place. Multiple Not My President's Day demonstrations were held on the American holiday on Monday, which usually celebrates the nation's past and present leaders. RT, New York. President Trump also found himself making headlines over in Sweden following claims he made about an incident in the country during a rally in Florida. Sweden! After Trump's comments, some media outlets were critical of his view on immigration. The president's statement also surprised the Swedish prime minister who defended his country's handling of the migrant situation. The Swedish embassy in the U.S. says it's planning to inform the Trump administration on its immigration and integration policies, while a former Swedish PM was less diplomatic, taking to Twitter to ask what has Trump been smoking. However, just two days later, riots broke out in a predominantly immigrant neighborhood in the north of Stockholm. We'll be crossing live to central Moscow, where a march is taking place in memory of murdered Russian opposition figure Boris Nemtsov. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Weekly. A march is taking place in central Moscow to mark two years since Russian opposition figure Boris Nemtsov was shot dead on a bridge next to the Kremlin. Now, RT's Nikki Aaron is at the scene right now and has all the details. Now, Nikki, you've been following the trial. Uh, I'm afraid we seem to have lost Nikki Aaron, so we will go back to that story if we can get hold of her. Nikki, can you hear me now? No, I'm afraid we've lost her, so we'll get back to that as soon as we can. Now. The coach of British four-time Olympic gold medalist Mo Farah has reportedly broken rules on using performance-enhancing drugs. That's according to the UK Sunday Times. The editor Richard McLaren to back his accusations of Russian state-sponsored doping in sport may not be sufficient. The revelation came from the Director General of the International Olympic Committee in an open letter. At the recent meeting, 21st of February, held by WADA in Lausanne, it was admitted... ...is taking place in central Moscow to mark two years since Russian opposition figure Boris Nemtsov was shot dead on a bridge next to the Kremlin. Now, we're going to reconnect with Artie's Nikki Aaron, who is there live at the scene. Now, Nikki, uh, can you hear us, firstly? <laughs> Yes, I can, Nadira. That's great. Like you can see behind me, thousands of people have taken to the streets of central Moscow today. For keeping us up to date with the march that's taking place, and we've been told there's around 5,000 people participating according, according to security services. Artie's Nikki Aaron there. 
Russia's longest serving ambassador to the United Nations died in New York on Monday, just a day before his 65th birthday. Vitaly Churkin spent more than 40 years in the Russian diplomatic service and served at the UN for more than a decade, where his passing was marked by a minute's silence. He was a dear colleague of all of ours. Next on Arte International, the controversial story of an American man who received four life sentences when he was just 15 years old.